Hi everybody, and I know you may have thought I disappeared, <laughs> and for a few days I did. Now we had an extraordinarily busy time on campus between Tuesday and Thursday, and to be honest with you, when I got to Friday I just said, I have got to have my Labor Day weekend start a little bit early, and as it always happens, when you have that extended even one day holiday weekend, it goes by so fast. It seems like it was about three hours ago that it was Thursday night, so <laughs> I, please forgive me. It may happen every once in a while, but I guarantee you we're going to try to give you a lot of meat this week. Uh, I hope you, if you're not having to work today, that you're just enjoying rest and not trying to cram everything in that you possibly can in a holiday weekend because a lot of times you work so hard preparing for that that you don't really take time to rest. And as we talked about early on in this, getting good rest is very, very important. But today I wanted to talk about two brief things. One is to give some encouragement to one of our own. Uh, a young reporter, Julia, Ewalt Aubrey, who is uh, very well known in a short time here in our community as one of the anchors of Good Morning West Tennessee here in Jackson, Tennessee, and also uh, for her reporting. And because her co-anchor, Josh Robinson, who is another part of our group here, because Josh has decided to pursue an allied field, uh, in working with an advertising agency and marketing agency uh, that is very successful in this community. Uh, Julia has had a lot of hits <laughs> to go at one time because the chemistry between Josh and Julia was really, really good in the morning. I have to confess, I, I was not up very many mornings to see them, but when I did, uh, it was a very pleasant thing. It's hard for me to watch early morning television because I'm not a morning person. But they did so without overpowering you or being silly. They were just really uh, good young professionals. But Julia is now assuming the mantle because Josh did more often than not uh, take the realm and, and take the reins in our morning health department briefings that we have three mornings a week here about the pandemic uh, at WBBJ Studios. So what happened is that uh, Julia was in on the briefing this past uh, Friday. Let me take that back. Yeah, yeah, it was Friday. I'll rewind the tape on that. And that was another one of the things that was just extraordinarily stressful for a lot of us. And I'll try to summarize this as briefly as I possibly can. We had a political event in this community that was held at a very popular tourist attraction and restaurant. And so what happened is WBBJ's cameras were there and captured, and this, this was a group of politicians, elected officials from uh, assorted area counties. We're the hub for about 19 rural counties around West Tennessee, and a lot of these rural mayors have refused to have anything to do with any kind of a mask mandate. Uh, they're just refusing to do it. And a lot of Jackson's workforce comes from their counties. And there's a very strong belief on the part of the health department people after doing contact tracing that uh, some, at least, of the cases that we have of COVID-19 have been brought in from other counties. Now, I don't know that you could possibly tell precisely, but that at least some have happened, but they're not on the same page about everything. We have a mask mandate here in Madison County, Tennessee. So anyway, fast forward to all of this. This event was held at a very popular place here, and uh, the owners are very well respected and have been, it's a third generation uh, business. And so WBBJ's cameras captured the vast majority of these elected officials or politicians who were there in a, in a rally for the United States Senate candidate uh, for the GOP in Tennessee. And just tons of people, no masks on, 
not doing a great deal of social distancing. Now, the owners of the place, their side of the story was that these people, most of these people came into the store with masks on and then pulled them off once they got inside to socialize. Now, you can argue all day long as to the merits of that. But anyway, it came up on our health department briefing, and I asked the first question about it uh, last week. And on Friday, <clears throat> Julia, I, and I want to tell you, those of you who are veteran professionals in journalism would have been very proud of the way she stood her ground and continued to ask questions, not in aggressive, not in an antagonistic manner, but continued to ask questions about how we are going to deal with this. And, and in fact, in so many words, I'm paraphrasing Julia here, but at one point she said, well, if we're not going to have, and again, paraphrasing, if we're not going to have any teeth that allows businesses to be cited, then why have a mask mandate? In so many words, it was a very valid question. Uh, because the mask mandates that we have here to get right down to it are more like mask suggestions or mask encouragements because nobody's being cited for violating them. And so it apparently just, uh, it was a very hard question for a lot of these people to answer because they had to say, well, all we can do is get the information out. And I will tell you, I know this because she told me, that Julia was accused of being, quote, a Karen by some happy fans and viewers uh, after that briefing on Friday morning. It was just, uh, you know, she was doing her job. And that's why I say you veteran professionals, those of you who are retired, you would be very proud of the way she stuck up for what really journalists should do in a case like this because it painted a very bad picture. Here we are in a county with a mask mandate, and at least for whatever period of time the cameras captured them, these people had no masks on. And so it was uh, certainly a big part of the news. Uh, it didn't exactly make the owners of the restaurant very happy. And, they're, and I, as I say, I've known them for 30 years. They're fine people. but. I think it did catch them in a situation where they weren't as attentive to this as they should have been once these people, because you got to make it very plain to organizers of these events that if you're going to come into a place, you've got to abide by the rules. So nonetheless, uh, Julia took some heat about this from uh, a couple of areas, and I am about to just have steam come out of my ears about the fact that certain people, and I don't even know whoever gave them traction, uh, and whoever gave them traction as far as I'm concerned, they're about as valuable as ants at a picnic. To take names like Karen, Aaron, uh, Eric, and you go through, there's about a half dozen names. Uh, Becky is another one that they've taken and tried to besmirch them just because of a label that is being attached. So I want everybody to know Julia did her job and she did it right even though that at times it makes you unpopular to have to ask questions. She asked at one time if this business was going to be cited for the violations of the mask mandate. And of course, the, the people in charge said no. And the point comes to that is that uh, we don't have a situation like some California counties where if you're spotted in public without a mask, you could be fined $500. Uh, go look it up because that's what it is in some, I don't think it's all, but in some California counties. Um, so nonetheless, my hat's off to Julia for doing her job. She deserves some encouragement on this Labor Day. The other thing that I wanted to bring up very briefly, and that is this. There are some of you who are having to work on this holiday, and you've already had to work many of them. I did. Uh, I think the first year that I was in television, I had to work Christmas Day, and I had to work Labor Day. And it's not the easiest thing in the world to do because it's, 
it's hard to come up with stories that don't sound like the same ones you did one year ago unless you have some kind of a spot story or a breaking story. But the same stories that you did a year ago about, oh, shoppers that are out, what about the economy on Labor Day? And also, are people getting last minute items for kids going back to school? All of those kind of things, those stories that you have done a hundred times when it's on a holiday season. Uh, one story suggestion that, and it's a little late for that now, but think about it in the future, that I've had is if you could get access, you have to plan this in advance, but if you could get access to some old pictures from your community, and one thing we have here that is, uh, we've had used as a great resource is that we've got access to a 1953 film that was done, that was sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce. It's now become a period piece. And it shows Jackson in the business community, which was mostly all downtown, uh, in the 50s. And it, it's just a wonderful piece to show retro, what life was like then. But getting people in, and you're going to have fewer and fewer people who remember this, but what it was like for people to have Labor Day off when entire towns just shut down because it was designed to be a day to honor those who are part of our working staff all across the country. And probably a lot of this began to change in the mid to late 60s when you had particularly in the South and Midwest proliferations of convenience stores that decided to stay open around the clock. And that was before you had gas stations attached to convenience stores. But they decided to stay open around the clock. And then you had places like Walgreens and some others who began gradually to join the mix of staying open. Now, nobody closes on Labor Day except maybe a few restaurants. We have a few around here in our town doing that. But for those of you who are having to work this day, I want to send a special salute to you because you're doing the work for a community. And it is true, you're probably not going to have the big major stories, although pandemic totals certainly make a difference this year as far as a meat and substance type of story. Updating those totals are always going to be significant, uh, no matter what day it is. But I wanted to encourage you because it is really, sometimes you feel like that you're <laughs> wandering out in the field and nobody else is around except maybe a scattered few friends. But you're doing the job that you knew when you got into it that this was going to be part of it. Uh, it's definitely the hardest thing in the world, I know, to work on a Christmas day. And I still think, and I'm going to say this at the risk of getting the wrath of some people in here who are veterans or retired. I think it is the most ridiculous thing in the world for television stations to do newscasts on Christmas Day. Uh, and I'm wandering off Labor Day. And I'll say more on that later, but I really do. And the reason I say that is because it is just simply a day that you have almost nothing. And the only re you, want, you know why the only reason that TV stations do newscasts on Christmas Day. It's so that they can get the after Christmas Day discount sales, that advertising on Christmas Day, so everybody can get in line and uh, get all the discounts and all of the bargains the day after Christmas. It's the only reason they do that. Uh, but Labor Day, is it, it doesn't seem as much like a holiday as it once did because so much of the business and commerce community and so many of the retail stores, they're open. It's almost like any other day. And so we've lost that really as a holiday that meant something. I remember those days uh, that up until the early 70s where I lived, that everything shut down and gave people a break. So to those of you who are, ever, are working in newsrooms anywhere and everywhere across our region and across the country, here's a salute to you because it is appreciated. Okay, I promise that starting tomorrow and for four days and regardless of what I have up on my, <laughs> on my shoulder, uh, I am going to be here in Tuesday through Friday. I'm going to tell my story about 
my experience with depression that was in all three bouts related to TV news and also uh, to the profession that is an allied area that I've been in for 28 years and that is uh, being a broadcast journalism professor and what my road back was. It is not the easiest story in the world to tell, but I tell it gladly because we have so many people who are struggling with mental health issues and we've got to help them get back to where life is normal for them. Not a new normal, but get them back to the old normal. So I'll see you here tomorrow and I hope everybody who has the day off, enjoy yourself a great Labor Day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.